But let's take a second text and let's go to uh, Genesis, uh, Bereshit, the first book of the uh, Hebrew Scriptures. And here, as Jacob is saying goodbye to his uh, uh, children, he is now pronouncing the will. And this is the reading of the will, if you please. And uh, he is uh, calling each of the uh, uh, 12 sons before him. And you would think Reuben would be the one who would get the right to firstborn. But no, he passes over Reuben. He passes over Simeon. He passes over Levi. Judah. Bingo. That's where we're going. It's the fourth one. And he centers in on Judah, and he says to him, you are a lion's cub, verse 9. And then goes into verse 10 and says, the scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until Shiloh comes, or as it's translated by some, until the peacemaker comes. Or another way to translate that word, as it is in other versions, until he comes to whom it belongs, and the obedience of the nations uh, are his. The obedience of the nations uh, will be his. All right, we're reading from Genesis 49.10, Forty nine following in the 10. Bible. Okay. Now, the text here, I think, is uh, beautiful because you have the scepter on one hand, and he speaks of this, which is the symbol of authority and of uh, leadership. And not only do you have the scepter, but he speaks to of the ruler's staff. So here are the two symbols of government, and they belong to one particular tribe, and that is the tribe of Judah. Then he says, interestingly enough, not only will he have the symbols of government, but he says they will not depart from those in Judah until the one to whom it belongs or until Shiloh comes. It's not Johnny Shiloh. It's not the city of Shiloh. It's a very special Shiloh. And it is known in the scriptures in the prophet Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 27. He'll refer back to this and will give us the longer form of that same word. Uh, and we'll translate it as the one whose right it is, or the one to whom it belongs is. When he comes, then finally the authority will pass from Judah and will pass over to Mashiach, to Messiah, to, I think, Yeshua. Why do I think Yeshua? Jesus of Nazareth. Because that whole thing continued up until the time of the fall of the Second Temple. When you get up to 70 A.D., by no more tribal distinctions, and Judah is gone. So the scepter and the staff of the government will not depart from Judah until the one whose right it is comes. I submit to you that sometime prior to 70 AD, uh, to the 70 of the Christian era, as others will put it, there had to be a time when indeed this one came. And the prerogatives of government then belong to him, and more than that, the obedience of the nations will be his too. All of the families of the earth, every tribe, every tongue, every nation will be channeled to this ruler who is to come. I think that's a fantastic case for the Messiah. So he comes from Bethlehem, and he also comes out of Judah. He is a ruler and he is one to whom the government has been given all authority, now transferred from the tribe of Judah, for he himself comes from Judah, as we will see.